The Labour Party, we saw yesterday, didn't we? Sam Tarry, in direct contravention of what Sir Keir Starmer said, it's the RMT strike, Sam Tarry, there he was, Shadow Minister for Buses and Local Transport, although in his interview with Good Morning Britain, he did seem to promote himself to being Shadow Minister for Transport. And he was sacked by Starmer yesterday. Now, whether that was strength on Starmer's part or weakness on Starmer's path, you can be at home and speculate about. But what is an interesting, much wider debate is what now is the relationship of the Labour Party, or perhaps more importantly, the wider Labour movement with the trade union movement. After all, they worked hand in glove for decade after decade. It would appear, would it not? And I'm joined by Ken Livingstone, not currently a Labour Party <laughs> member. You've been in and out over the years. But the Labour movement, of yeah. course, Ken, has, has been your well, whole life. Of course. I mean, back in the 1960s, I, I joined a trade union. I joined the Labour Party. They were totally integrated. I mean, um, at my local Labour Party meeting, there were all these delegations from the trade unions and other people like me and so on. And it, it, you work together. In actual fact, the Labour Party had been created by the trade unions yeah. about a century ago. Yeah. And the idea now that, I mean, you've got a Labour leader who sacks somebody for supporting workers on strike. And those people on, uh, working on the rail industry, they're being given pay cuts. I mean, they're, they're well, hang pays... on, hang on, hang on. They're being offered 8% pay rise over the next two years. Over two years. years, but there'll be about 15% inflation. I mean, for the last couple of years, across... I mean, the private and public sector, people's wage increases haven't kept up with inflation. People are worse off. That is without doubt mm. true. And I felt when Mick Lynch mm. first went onto the airwaves, he was commanding a fair yeah. bit of public sympathy. He's good at it, mm. you know. Um, but when suddenly an offer for 8% over two years comes, and people say, well, I get that doesn't keep pace with inflation, but it's more than I'm going to get. I mean, aren't we in one of those situations where well, every pay demand that comes from a trade union mm. can, can't be met. Well, it can be met. We're the fifth richest nation in the world, but almost all our, the wealth that's created go to that richest 1%, or oh, one-tenth of 1%. I mean, uh, we were, in the last 40 years, inequality in Britain has doubled. I, I was born at the end of the war, and in that first 30 years after the war, inequality was hard. We were all optimistic. Every year, everything got better. Everybody got a job. I mean, if you couldn't buy a home, you'd eventually get a council home, things like that. Now look at the world we're in. I agree that the rich have got richer. Mm. I, mean, I completely agree with that. Mm. I understand that. Although, mm. fair to say, the top 1% do pay 30% of tax revenues. No, no. They launch so they all, all, well, all through dodgy deals well, in the well, Middle East. So. Not <laughs> everybody that's rich and successful is a crook. But that, most of the that's, people... And socialists get that wrong. The super but, rich... But, but, don't let, pay their but fair let's share. get back to the point. Yeah. We, we, we've now got the threat of strikes mm. in sector mm. after sector, mm. both across the public mm. and the private mm. sectors. Isn't the lesson, the harsh lesson from the 1970s, mm. that if you give in to trade union and private sector mm. demands for wage increases in line with inflation, all you do is fuel inflation further? No, no. I mean, the simple fact is you can't expect that ordinary people with a, you know, a family to care for should see a pay cut on the scale we've been seeing in the last few years. This is ridiculous. As I said, we're the fifth richest nation in the world. With a, but the uh, with a massive rich, deficit, Ken. Yes, and that's why I'm opposed to any more borrowing. We should be counting on... When I became the leader of the Great London Council, we had a huge debt. I actually each year reduced that. So how do we pay... How do we keep? How do we give pay increases in line with really inflation easy. and not increase debt? We have a fairer tax system. So Literally, you, you want to tax the, the richest the higher people? Earners. Don't pay any tax at all. They launder all their money overseas that is and things like that. Just not fair. Uh, but but it, of course it's not fair. But it is it's true. Not right. And many of our largest companies are laundering their money abroad. They're not paying tax. I mean, literally, the the inequality um, in terms of tax burdens has just become in absolutely intolerable. Ken, if you pursue that route, and you mm. remember mm. that in 1979, mm. top rate income, forget unearned mm. income, but income tax top rate was 83%, yeah. and it saw a flight of our young graduates, no, our know, young, talented people, they left for other parts of the world. When I got my first job in 1962, the Tory Prime Minister, um, Macmillan, the top rate of tax on the richest was 98%. 
And that was the norm. Well, that was unearned income. Yeah. That was a... And Keir Starmer, what does he do? Because he's positioning himself a little bit piggy in the middle here, isn't he? He's well, not he... coming down on the side of the unions. He's not trying to oppose them. What should he do? Well, when he was running for leader, I, I supported him. I've been disappointed. I, the, the sacking of the MP today, I think, is wrong. I think the trouble with Keir is he's trying to accommodate to the right too much. But if you want a good Labour victory at the next election, you have to have good, radical socialist policies. Like when Wilson won in 64, you know. Didn't work for Corbyn, did it? Well, I think the, the real problem for Jack, when you actually look back, Jeremy had been leader for two years, and then there was the 2017 election. He got the biggest increase in the Labour vote for 72 years, came within 2% of defeating the Tories. But then you had only all these lies and smears about anti-Semitism. And, and they were lies, were they? Of course they I mean, I've been in the Labour Party since 1969. In all that time, I've never heard a single anti-Semitic comment. I've only ever heard one racist comment back in 1970. If you're racist or anti-Smith, you're not going to join the Labour Party. The Labour Party has been the home, political homeland for the Jewish community for a century. When I got elected to Parliament back in 87, almost every Jewish MP was sitting on the Labour benches. Ken Livingstone, it's great to have you on hey, the show. Wonderful. And the great thing about GB News is we're here for free speech. We want <laughs> Labour voices, we want Conservative voices. You get my voice and opinion too, but we think... You're big enough and ugly enough at home to make your own minds up. And we're about free speech, and that's what really matters. I'm sure Ken and I... That's why I watch you every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you.